and okay. I will make you the host. Okay. Usually I usually I start the recording, but that's fine. So I noticed that and we've um we're fine to do that um moving forward. We just noticed for a few of the other committees that I set meetings up for that if um an outside host was starting the recording, it didn't always work. Okay. And um that's fine. And they would record to their hard drive instead of recording to the cloud, which makes it tough for us to post eventually to the YouTube channel. Sure. Okay. Well, anyway, so, I'll just I'll let people know they're already being recorded yeah. as they show up. Everything is on the record. All right. Thank you. Have a great meeting. Thanks. Hey, before I go, are you ready to have me schedule some? I noticed you haven't had a lot of new applicants, but we did just put out a call for more applicants. Are you ready to do interviews to fill your vacancies? Oh, sure. But uh, I think we're expecting that Ellen Kiter is going to be back today. She had sent Perfect. me an email. So that's, that's okay. great. Um, and, but, but, but we could, if, if we do have anybody to, to interview, we could do that. So right now you have one vacancy or two? Uh, we are, so we'd have two, I guess, even okay. with, with Ellen back. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Thanks so much, Bill. I'll be in touch. Okay. Thanks. Oh, there's Ellen. Speaking of the devil, just talking about you, Ellen. Oh, <laughs> I hope it's like all good things. Yeah, yeah. Well, Angela was asking about vacancies and such, and I said, well, we're really helping Ellen's back today, so welcome back. Here I am. Yay! Um, hey. <laughs> thank you. Just Happy so everybody knows, Angela already started recording. We're not officially meeting yet, but we are being recorded, so FYI. Okay. Um, <laughs> but how, how are you doing, Ellen? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Grateful yeah. to be healthy and back at work, back here, doing awesome. my usual things. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, you, you should meet Dara, our newest yes. member. Hi, have Dara. You, have you guys met you. before? No. I don't know. I don't think so. Thanks. Yeah. So Ellen is a chief curator at the Eric Carl Museum and a very important member of the Public Art Commission. <laughs> Um, because she has lots of great professional expertise. And Dara uh, is a, a local poet and uh, patron of the arts, I would say. Great. And Eric, Eric, can you hear, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh, okay, because you don't have a picture up or anything. That's the way you want it. No, I didn't put it up. I, you know, I, I will if you insist, but I had no surgery for basal cell yesterday and I got this sure. big honking mm. bandage on my nose. So. Oh. No problem. <laughs> Desperate to see that. I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll give you your privacy. <laughs> sure. All right. So we 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 have a, a quorum. So I guess let's see. Is it is it four o'clock? So I guess I'll read my little spiel and we can begin. Um, so pursuant to chapter uh, chapter two G of Act of the Acts of twenty twenty one, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Uh, either via Zoom or afterwards on YouTube. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite our best efforts, um, we will post on the Amherst Media website um, slash YouTube an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. All right, so uh, bring up the agenda. One second. Um, Get in. We start. So I'll lurk down here. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we usually start with public comment, and as as usual, no members of the, there was somebody from the public. It seemed like before, but now we're at zero. So if that person. Oh, wait a minute. Back, we got we got Eric and we got Georgia Barnhill. Yeah, but that's not for public comment, Jim. I'm just saying. Later. <laughs> um, I'm right. looking for I'm looking for public comment. That's separate. So, uh, Jim, are you taking Are you taking minutes? Yep. Great. Um, all right. So, I think because we have two guests here, and town council does this often, um, we can jump down on the agenda directly to the uh, thing that concerns our two guests, um, uh, Gigi and Eric. Uh, oh. They want to talk to us about the community embracing community project they've developed and getting some extra support from the 
Public Art Commission. Um, I, Eric, you know, you, you sort of laid it out for me in an email, uh, but the rest of the group doesn't really know what's going on. So do you want to fill everybody in and I can um, sort of back you up as need be or, or Gigi, of course, as well can. Sure, I'm happy to do that. Uh, briefly, the project we're doing is called Embracing Community. It's a large mural project that involves the K-12 students in Amherst public and private schools uh, to put uh, large, basically eight by 10 feet murals uh, on triangular structures on the East Common, which is the common that's opposite Fort River School. Uh, 10 of them sent a total of 30 murals. Um, and it involves a fair amount of uh, fundraising. The project is probably about a ten to $11,000 project in all. And uh, we will be doing a GoFundMe campaign for it. Uh, we expect to get some money from the Amherst Cultural Council, um, but we are probably going to be going for sponsorships as well. And um, it seems uh, important that we provide an opportunity for people who want to donate to this project that they'd be able to take tax deduction for the contribution. In talking to Paul Bachelman about the project, um, he suggested uh, that the public art Art Commission would um, be in some ways an ideal um, fiscal agent, if you will, for the project since uh, the Art Commission has already given a letter of support for it and it is certainly a public art project for the town of Amherst. So the purpose of our presence today is essentially to ask whether the, the Public Art Commission would be willing to do that and frankly I'm not entirely sure how that works. Uh, Paul seemed to be in favor of it. Uh, maybe somebody on the Art Commission knows how these fiscal agent things work, nor am I 100% certain that we'll need it because uh, it, it may be the, that we would be raising uh, enough money through the Amherst Cultural Council and through the GoFundMe campaign. But uh, Gigi assures me that if we wanna get money from, from banks and other large organizations like that, they won't donate to just individuals like Gigi and myself, but only to an organization. And if the Public Art Commission could be that organization, uh, all would be well for us. So, yeah, let Gigi, me, you have any... yeah, if I can yeah, break into in. the background. Um, yeah, basically, Paul Bachelman said that it's easy enough to do. It basically is adding one line to the non-existent budget for the Public Art Commission. But basically the town can receive tax deductible donations. And particularly, I, I did speak to one of the banks um, before this came up or when this came up and the bank basically said, we really need an organizational background um, to give money. And for individuals, you know, it, it's nice to get a tax deduction if you can itemize deductions, so. It, we, um, I don't want this um, kind of fiscal piece of work to make it impossible for, for the Public Art Commission to apply to the Cultural Council for funding in the fall of, yeah, in this fall, it would be that cycle. So Eric and I will apply to the Cultural Council as, an, as individuals. Um, so that won't compromise your being able to have your own proposal for something different. As I think about um, this project, a lot of the money goes to hardware, um, i.e. the structural pieces. Oh, that's a good look. Yeah. Um, so it goes to hardware. And that means the town would own the hardware. And I think the Public Art Commission could really make wonderful use of it. Um, I mean, this is not a one-time thing. Once we have the hardware, it can go up and down, up and down, up and down. You can use you know, one unit in Kendrick Park to announce something or to displace some artwork or whatever. Um, I can foresee a great installation down on the, the golf course. Is it Hickory Ridge that the town will be ta is taking over. I mean, what a fabulous place for uh, a temporary show of landscape art or something. Anyway, 
That's another good reason for the Public Art Commission to act as an agent. Yeah, so um, from what I read in your email, Eric, and my understanding of the budgeting process, they could just take the code that we use um, for, for our, and, and Shona, you may be able to help out here since you've been treasurer, um, and they could just add a, a sort of sub sub code, like add another couple of numbers on the end of that, that would then be set aside for you. They will be under our account, but set aside for you guys. Correct. Um, does, that, does that accord with what you know, Shona? Um, I feel like um, Jim probably knows exactly this how to proceed with this because he was um, part of that process with getting that money for the opening at the um, in September there for the right. The well, so okay. It First. would come to our account, but be marked for their project is what I'm, I'm thinking how it would work easiest for us, for everybody probably. Yeah. Come okay. in, but like have it marked for that and just make sure that, you know, everyone's in line correctly. Right. Yeah, we, go ahead, Ellie. I was like, just gonna uh, say with, with the dog park, um, for private donations, we just made checks to um, the town of Amherst and in the subject line wrote, you know, for the Amherst dog park. Exactly. Um, it, you don't write the check to the <laughs> dog park. <laughs> right, right. That doesn't exist yet. So I think right. that's how you would do it for this. Yep. That's a really good point, uh, Ellen, because I was wondering, you know, what if we approach a sponsor and ask them to write a check for this project, who, how did they make it out, whether they made it out to um, embrace community uh, care of the public art commission but i think what you're saying is makes a lot more sense if they just make it out to the public art the amherst public art commission and note in the memo line where it goes actually i think you would make the check out just to the town of amherst oh, town of amherst right. that's okay. what we did for the dog park and then um again we should talk to the finance manager about that um but that allows you because the town of amherst is like an incorporated you know right. we, the the Arts Council is in a, you know, yeah. 301C, whatever. So um, that way you can, people can take a tax donation for that. Yeah, I would say to make 100% sure, talk to Holly um, Drake. Her last name's Drake now. Oh, shit. <laughs> and she'll, she'll know. Yeah. <laughs> we, we haven't gotten any checks yet. I need an opportunity to say I'm recusing myself from this uh, problem <laughs> because of obvious situation. What could that be? I, I will say that uh, yeah. the only thing, factual information I concur, I, when I did the thing earlier, I just wrote a check to the town of Amherst and, and I wrote re funds restricted for use by Public Arts Commission. So uh, you know, I don't see much downside here for us, um, maybe a little extra administrative work, but I'm actually even wondering, like, if it's, if there's other ways we can contribute or, you know, like, have it be a more collaborative project or are there other ways we could potentially help you guys um, as you're developing this? There are absolutely ways that you can help us. I haven't uh, started to, uh, recruiting volunteers yet for um, different aspects of the project, but I mean, everything from helping fundraise to helping erect these structures when the time comes. I mean, they're, they're pipes that just get screwed together, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, and the murals will be, uh, will be attached to those pipes, uh, either by some kind of bungee cords or wiring to the, to the outside structure um, and, the, and then erect it. And there will be also a... Um, a um, some sort of celebratory uh, event once it goes up in the next May, a year from May. And it would be great to have the Public Art Commission involved in that as well. And of course, uh, we intend to give all the sponsors, everybody who's participated, uh, due credit on the in publicity. So you would get some visibility that way as well. Yeah. And Eric, will there be a jury? Is this going to be um, a jury selection or how, how are you determining? 
okay. who gets exhibited? Um, that's a really good question. And uh, the, the short answer is yes. Um, we're having a Zoom meeting with a bunch of the teachers who are participating tomorrow. And we're gonna to talk to them about what their role would be. And I think their role would be making initial selections from their students to th that they think are worthy of being enlarged eight by 10 feet. And hopefully they will get way more than 30 total. And then yes, sir, we ex expect to put together a jury. We haven't done it, we haven't asked people yet. Uh, a small group that would, it could involve someone from the Art Commission certainly uh, one of us, certainly, Gigi or myself, somebody um, maybe from the town council, I don't know. Uh, and uh, it's, it's an open question of what the jury, how big it should be, and um, not too big, obviously. It, it probably, the work will probably be judged online, there'll be submissions um, online, and um, so it wouldn't be too onerous in terms of you know looking at things, but yeah. Sure. Probably we need some help with public relations and yeah. you know, publicity, that kind of activity. And um, I'm sure we'll think of some other. Yeah. yeah. One thing um, I know when when we blow um, artwork, you know, small eight by 10 inch illustration up to 12 feet uh, mm -hmm. for for graphic murals at the museum. Um, you know, we, we use a super, super high res camera and actually photograph it in pieces and then digitally stitch it together so that it, it doesn't pixelate and fall apart when it's blown up that big. So um, that's just something else to consider. If these are gonna be eight by 10 feet, um, you'll need super great photography. Well, can I ask how many pi pixels per inch you're talking? I can find out. I don't do it personally. We we do it at somebody else does it at work. But yeah. Do you have such a camera, Ellen? Um, we do. Ah. Huh. We have a digital photo lab at the museum. Um, but again, um, it does take uh, you know, uh, software right. to then put the piece all the individual images together to make it into one giant work or maybe it gets vectorized so it can expand exponentially. Um, I'm not the expert in this. I just, mm. <laughs> I just know that in order for a small work to really hold um, you know, Together. its image uh, when it's blown up that big, it has to be photographed you know, very carefully. So that's an interesting point and not one that the printer that I've spoken to, a couple of them actually who told me that Basically, all we had to do was scan the artwork, and this probably the, this artwork would be like eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper that kids are working on at three hundred DPI, and they could blow it up to eight by ten feet, and it would hold together. So what you're saying is like a an order of magnitude more than that, and uh, I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to look into that more. Um, yeah. I can find out exactly what um, our digital asset specialist does. Um, I can get you some of those specs. Um, it also may not need to be the quality, museum quality. If you're seeing it from a distance. Yeah, um, will, will you have sort of the, uh, the thing, you want it clear to people who are driving by, but you will also want it clear for people who are on the green. Both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll well, ask. I'll ask our um, specialists to so just right. get some general specs, um, but I think that will at least provide a little bit of a guideline for you. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you for that, and I can also check back with Sarasota and what they did, which is our model for this. They've been doing it in Sarasota for twenty years. Um, it's I'm glad you raised that point. So I'm happy to uh, send an email to Paul, which is what you had requested, Eric, and ask him to uh, tell, I guess, presumably Holly to set up the budget line for for this. Um, I don't think we need to put that on the floor to a vote. I mean, I can, but uh, if there's no objections, uh, that was the one concrete thing you were asking of me right now. Is was right. there other, anything no, else? Yeah. Right. That was. We just wanted to make sure that when we went out fundraising, you know. 
what we could tell people how they should make out their checks and uh, whether we actually were allowed to do this. And, and Paul you know, said, yes, it made sense, but of course it obviously needed your endorsement. Yeah, this is great. And we will of course list you folks as, a, as one of the sponsors um, at the very least. And if we want to work out something else between now and May of 2023, we could do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or just send me an email whenever you um, put anything in so I can um, take a note of it. Yeah, maybe I'll see, see you when I, when I email Paul and just note that I'm including you because you're our treasurer. Okay. Um, okay, uh, anything else? Eric or Gigi? Well, no, nope, that's great. Thank yeah. you so much. This really makes life a whole lot easier. Right. And, and for those of you, yeah, it's nice they, to see faces that I know from the old days at the art. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bill and Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you. I'll disappear now. Stay <laughs> in the background. <laughs> literally. Literally. So, Bill, what did you say you were going to do? I didn't get it for the minute. Uh, yeah. I'm going to email Paul and ask him to set up the budget line as Eric could oh, request it of me. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll include uh, Shona on that uh, CC with her on it. So she'll know as treasurer what's going on. All right. So yep. Is it, yes. I'm assuming that a lot of this work went on before I was part of your group and that you all know a lot more about it than me. So maybe if you have a piece of paper or a proposal, I could get sent it so I could re just read it so that if anybody asks me, I don't sound like I know nothing. Yes, I will forward it to you, Eric. That'd be I great. Presented a proposal for it, and, and we had written, or I had written a, on behalf of the commission, a letter of support. Um, yeah. This was six months ago or so. Yeah. And, uh, and then I think that they had not, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but they had applied for a cultural council grant for this year and not gotten it. And that one of the issues was that they hadn't yet met with the teachers. And, you know, so they're, they're now working on that. Is that seem correct, Jim? Well, I know they didn't get the funds. I wasn't, I didn't, I can't remember what the issue was, but it was correctable yeah. as I recall. Yeah. So we're, so, so that, that was one of the reasons why Eric then started thinking about, well, how can we fundraise for this project? And I think when he, he approached Paul, they sort of worked out this possibility for us to be you know, kind of holding some of the money for them. So, wait. Uh, I understand that yeah. now. I, that's sure. what I assumed. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, it was hard not to um, be thinking about that eat that big proposal you sent us today, since he was talking about a mural, and they're right. looking for some stuff that starts that at like startup yeah. type mural stuff. Yep. Yeah. So I was going to, that's what, so, so on our agenda, the next thing is the chair report. And um, I guess uh, that's probably the biggest, well, actually, no, I have, I don't remember if I hadn't, I think I had found out last time that we got accepted into the making it public program and that I and um, uh, Maureen are going to be the two representatives from the town participating in that. We, we no, did you guys know that? Not yes, me. No, no. Okay. I'd love to hear about that. So yeah, you didn't, so you weren't even here around for any of that stuff, but the state is running this really great program for helping municipalities, towns develop um, uh, public art projects or gaining more knowledge about how to do it. They're called Making It Public and it's a, a series of online seminars from March through April. Towns had to apply and get accepted. Uh, they had to have two staff members uh, willing and able to participate. So um, Janet McGowan from the, she's uh, on the planning board had sent me the notice. I hadn't even seen it and said, hey, heads up, check this out. Um, the exciting thing about it is at the end of the program, the towns that got accepted each get a $10,000 grant to produce a work of, of public art. And so we were chosen and myself and Maureen Connor are the uh, two town staff members who are gonna participate. Um, and so that's, that'll start in March. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And I think the way we spun our letter was that while we've been producing public art events programs for many, many years with a percent for art by law, we're, we're going up a huge order of magnitude, right? So the North Common project, we're looking at probably a minimum of a $50,000 project versus a 
2000, you know, we work in the order of several thousand dollars. So that's a very big difference. And there's a lot, there's going to be a lot more visibility for those projects. And so um, there's just a lot of, uh, you know, professional standards and practices that would be good for, for, for me to brush up on and learn more about. And I, I think it's all new to Maureen. So for her to learn about as well. So we're hoping that's what we'll get out of this. Um, it's not entirely clear to me what will happen on a session to session basis. I'll give you guys reports as it, as it goes on. Um, but anyway, uh, it's pretty exciting. So great. Congratulations. Great. Yeah. That project was called what? Making it public. Thank you. Um, so sort of connected to that, but but sort of to one side, the um, the the state is, oh gosh, I don't remember the number now, some multi-million dollar pile of money, Charlie, but Ellen, you might know, it's just signed on for uh, recovery or culturally related recovery grants, but they don't know how those are going to get distributed yet. So they're taking comments from from towns um, and from organizations. And so that came across Paul's desk through the Cultural Council. And then he sort of passed it along to Maureen and myself. And um, we had a meeting today. It was Maureen and Chris Brester from planning, uh, myself, Claudia Pasmani from uh, the, um, uh, the, the, she's not in the bid. It's the, um, what's the other one? Her. I'm sorry? Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce, thank you. And then, uh, and then, and then, um, uh, Gabrielle Gould from the bid, um, just sort of strategizing how to uh, write a letter, sort of saying what we're looking for here in Amherst relative to potential grants. Um, anyway, in the lead up to that, Maureen forwarded to me the document that I then passed along to you which I had never seen, never been invited to participate in, and would kind of my jaw kind of dropped, right, at the um, amount of discussion surrounding public art there was in this document that was put together by the town, George Ryan, ex-town counselor, um, planning department, and, and, and Gabrielle, uh, the bid, uh, without having us participate in any way. Um, so uh, I was, and I'm uh, not happy about that, um, on the other hand, there's a lot of great things in there. Um, so, uh, you know, Dara, I know you looked at it already, um, but the problem is that there's a lot of duplication of work or a lot of stuff where we really need to be working together with them and not be shut out of the process, which is what I feel like we certainly were when that was put together. Yeah. So I'd like to have that on the agenda for next time so we can sit down and really think about how to reply to that and how to work together with the bid and not be shut out of all of their many um, important uh, plans, uh, you know, to put it nicely, that they're working on um, because we really, we're really supposed to be the advocates in town for public art and uh, we haven't been invited to the table and we should be kind of leading these conversations in a lot of ways, or at least certainly be in the room when they're being had. Um, uh, let me just say that one little tiny thing you might tell them that is on uh, page, page 10 of that document, yeah. in making your big case for it being an, a cultural and art center, the Dickinson Museum's name is spelled right. <laughs> I, I, picked, I picked up on quite a few as well. I yeah. found some too. I saw a few myself. Yeah, yeah, and I, it, it, the whole document to me read like a boilerplate template that can be applied to many places with insertions of an individual town's facts, you know. Yeah. And so it was a little shocking too to read it, knowing that you hadn't even been told about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was surprised about their wanting to make a a map of the public, you know, to, to locate all yeah. the public art that exists already. And I mean, we have all that, you know, that's, I mean, that's what I, thought. I, I would hate for them to spend money doing things that have already been done. Um, yeah. So we, we definitely should reach yeah. out to the. Well, and they have that map in the visitor center, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think one of the things they're trying to do, which actually I think is a great idea is, is not just map, places where there's public art already, mm -hmm. but try to identify all the places where public art could go, public and private. I think that's a fantastic idea, actually. And I, I really would love to work with them on that because then we can understand 
well, this is a great place for a mural. It's a private building. Oh, here's a public building where, and then, you know, we sort of have purview over the public stuff and they tend to work more with the private stuff. But um, like, you know, I think there's a lot of great stuff in there. I was just distressed that we weren't part of the conversation. So I think we need to become part of that conversation. Do you, Do you have, have any idea why problem? not? <laughs> I have some ideas, but none I'm willing to <laughs> discuss yeah. now and here. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I just, my thinking is, if you know what the problem is, you, you can't solve a problem until you know what it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that we have a problem. I just want to make sure that we are participating as fully as we can be. So, and I think, you know, um, I don't think I don't think there will be a big issue with that. I just, um, I think we need to just make our voice heard. So, so next, so for our next meeting, everybody can look at that closer. Um, and if we want to schedule a meeting sooner than four weeks out, we can do that. I mean, I don't think there's an incredible sense of urgency here, but. Um, but I think there's a lot of good ideas there too. So I think maybe what we can do is read that with the idea of, you know, crafting an email or something or a response and saying, hey, this is great. Wow, like look at all the work you guys did. Here's our thoughts on some of these ideas, you know, something like that. Well, I don't, but see, I don't even know who this is. Well, it was put together, primarily it was put together by the bid, um, but, you know, sort of working loosely with the town. And when, when you say with the town, who does that mean? Oh, well, if you look in the beginning, so George Ryan was a representative of the council on it and uh -huh. other people from planning were on it. And I think they had a consulting group work on it. So I, yeah, I read money. the list of names and yeah. I recognize some of them, but yeah. it's still like, those were not the people who wrote the document. They were consulted. I think the cons well, yeah, I don't know who actually sat down and wrote it. Yeah, because that's good to know. Yeah. And and if they were a consulting outfit of some kind paid to do it. Yeah, we can try to find that. that. It looked like it was. Yeah. I can try to find out more. Yeah, that kind of stuff is just good background. Yeah. If, if they mean what they say about arts and culture and Amherst, it's all positive for a group like this to have a good, good way to try to be some force within it somehow, you know, but you don't really know what the motives are or anything right now. Not, right. you know, I mean, I, so many things struck me as like really contradictory within it. You yeah. know, they'd say one thing, then they'd say another thing and they didn't really fit. Yeah. Yeah, well, these kind of planning documents get produced periodically for various reasons. And then what happens is the language in them gets spun off, for example, into a So they want to take the language from this and spin it off into a response to the state about how to spend some of this, or you know, how the state will hand us some of that grant money. They'll spin it off into other grants that they're writing, the bid or the town. Um, so that's that's what tends to happen with these kinds of things. They, you know, so so there was a bunch of state grants that came through that that the bid won and the town won, and in fact the the um, Amherst Cultural District won um, for COVID recovery or for um, sustaining businesses and and activities during COVID. So the money we got for the portal gallery came through the cultural district um, as one of these recovery grants last spring summer uh, and so I don't think this doc this document wasn't written at that point but you know it's a kind of document that then would be used for these different organizations to apply for for recovery money okay good to know yeah uh, I think that's all I have for chair report stuff um, any treasurer report stuff Shona we have I heard from Holly we've got thousand all right um twelve hundred dollars in our account wow that's pretty good for us oh wait a second though we is that because that is that because we got money paid from the new that wouldn't include the new oh so i guess well we'll get to this but we did we did win yeah, um that, i don't know if that counts because i haven't sent over for it i think like to get it sent to you you have to ask for it beforehand so uh, question so, like i fill out a form to ask for that because you have to fill out a special form at least i did for my personal one that i got 
So I took care of that already. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. So we, we got, so we applied for $5,000 for the portal gallery from the um, Amherst Cultural Council. Um, they gave us half that, which is 2,500. So we applied for 5,000 for two exhibitions for next year, expecting that they might only give us money for one. Um, so I, I went back and forth with um, um, some folks on the, on the cultural commission about, well, should we just apply for one or should we apply for two? And that way, you know, you could always just give us one. So we ended up applying for two, they gave us money for one. So we got $2,500, um, which, you know, is great. It means we'll be able to do at least one show at the portal gallery next year. So we do need to get working at working on that and thinking about that. And so this year they changed how they're um, distributing funds. They're not reimbursing, they're giving you all the money up front, and then you just write a report at the end. And that's one of the reasons sort of why I asked, but we would have, uh, presumably we'd have the full 25 in there if that money had come through. Right, which that is not as much. <laughs> right, yeah. So we just need to keep an eye on that and, and, um, and find out when that comes through. Okay. Um, all right, we can, we can talk about that, I guess, a little bit later. North Common is the next thing on the agenda. I still have not heard. Uh, last I spoke with Paul about that, he said that um, they're still working on it. The question is, seems like pretty clear that the percent for our bylaw will apply, um, but they need to get further along in the process. Uh, he was supposedly gonna put together a committee over the summer, which didn't happen. I've spoken to him about it a couple of times since, and every time he says, you know, it'll happen. So um, just waiting for word from him. Um, but that's something for us to think about. You know, that's, uh, that is going to be our first really, really big project that we're going to be involved with with Percent for Arts. And um, hopefully this Making It Public program will help answer some of the bigger picture questions that I have. In fact, I might reach out to you guys and, and say, what questions do you think we should be asking of these experts um, as we move into that? So that's something to keep in mind. Obviously, um, being, being, you know, having equitable uh, applicant pools, having an equitable jury pool, those are first and foremost in my mind. Um, uh, but there's lots of other questions I'm sure we'll have. So if you wanna be thinking about those things now, uh, maybe we could even put together some kind of Google document just um, to start kicking around some ideas. Okay. Uh, and that goes hand in hand with percent for art. Um, the school project is also moving along, but that's not, they're still in a visioning process, um, let alone, the, you know, they, they did pick a project manager, but um, uh, they have to be a little further along in their process. I think it's gonna be at least six months to a year before um, any concrete percent for art issues will be coming up with them. Obviously they know that that's gonna be part of that project, um, but you know, until you have a sense of how many buildings exactly and what configuration on what site. I mean, they have to do all of these preliminary studies and get some of them again to determine whether it's gonna be at Fort Riverside or at Wildwood. I mean, until they figure that stuff out, they're not gonna even begin to get any into any nuts and bolts things that would bring percent for art into play. So poetic dialogue restoration, next thing on our agenda. Um, where we left that was that we were going to um, try to get the grounds work done and, and you know maybe have some kind of event surrounding that in the spring. Um, we're thinking about reaching out to the, the Dickinson and um, Shona, you had said you would say something to Alan Powell when you saw him. Were you able to just sort of, you know, tap him on the shoulder at all? I haven't seen him yet, actually. Oh, yeah. I um, we have our meeting on Tuesday. Okay. Like next Tuesday, like not tomorrow, right, Ellen? That's the deal. <laughs> it's it. It's next Tuesday, right? Because that'll be um, Tuesday. It's always the second Tuesday. So if you guys see him, either or both of you, just pull him aside and say, "Hey, we want to do the plantings in the spring for that and get that into shape." You know, what do you think, or where could where would we end up? Just sort of get some info. Um, and then Dara, you had said that you might want to be involved if we want to do like an opening or some kind of event potentially yeah. with the Dickinson. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can help with that. Okay, so, um, you know, I can send a, any, I haven't sent anything to Jane Wald yet. Um, oh, yeah. What's that? 
his phone. Yeah. Uh, I could I could send an email to Jane Wald at the Dickinson and just sort of touch base with her and see what she thinks. I mean, she was on board already. Uh, we don't everything's still kind of very vague right now, but just to maybe let her know we're thinking about doing something in the spring, early summer as the flowers come out, assuming we can get everything planted. Um, and then, you know, if, if you want to um, be involved in that conversation as it evolves, Dara, that would be great because um, it's sort of like a blank slate in a way if we want to have poetry readings, that would be really cool, I think, if the opening um, or something along those lines could be a really fun event. It'd be yeah. really nice to have um, some of the high school or younger people in town read, read something uh, by be, Frost and Dickinson. That could be really and cool. Something of their own, possibly. Mm -hmm. But it ought to be something like real small like that. Sure. Okay, we can work on that. That'll be that'll sort of potter along, I think, through the winter, and then hopefully we can it can pick up in the late winter, and then really get something going in the spring. Yes. Um, Altwood Gallery. So uh, that's the next thing on the agenda. Uh, ben Cowden's installation is deinstalled. Um, I sent an email about having the sign taken down uh, for now because it has, I had wanted them to do two signs, a top sign that just says Boltwood Gallery and a bottom sign that had the specifics about the installation. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. They just made one big sign. So the whole thing is gonna kind of have to come down. Otherwise it's gonna be very confusing to people as to why it says there's a work of art there that's not there. Um, so I sent an email to Jeremiah to that effect, um, who's head of facilities. I haven't heard back from him yet. Uh, but we will get this money, uh, $2,500, to do another installation there. Um, so we do need to start thinking about that um, and about how to get the best, again, the best possible applicant pool for that unusual space and um, what we think would work best there. Because I think when we put our, uh, our call for proposals out, um, really honing it so that we get things that work in that space is going to be crucial. Um, so I can lead the charge with that a little bit, um, but I think uh, oh, maybe I can try to just draft something rough um, uh, in terms of what the call might look like. Um, any any thoughts on that? The next round of portal gallery. I hate to bring up trivia, but I'm kind of disturbed that we paid for a sign that didn't get built the way we said. <laughs> Is there a way we can avoid doing that in the future? Because it would really be nice to have the sign up there permanently. We didn't pay for the sign. The town gave for the sign. Oh, well, okay. So if, so I'm not personally offended, but how can we prevent <laughs> that from happening again? Because it still isn't a good idea. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to ask to have the sign we want up, and hopefully we can get that. Well, do you know what the glitch was? I mean, you know, it's a good idea. So something, just something happened. That... I don't know. I mean, I'd sent the specs to Jeremiah. I think he might have misunderstood what I was asking for, or it wasn't clear. So... I'll have a, another conversation with him about it. Okay. Well, it, yeah, it obviously needs to be redone. So we'll make sure it's done the right way when it gets redone. So, um, right. yeah, That's I guess funny. we should look at um, our RFP for last time and, and go off of that. Um, we did sort of invite certain artists. Um, I think we had a good pool. We might want to re-invite some of the people who didn't weren't selected um but you know i think there was interest in their in their proposals um but i'd love to see a wider a wider group um it is a tricky space though yeah we didn't we actually did, didn't put out a we didn't, i don't think we put out an art we didn't really do it no, we, okay. we actually just tapped those three people because okay. um, we were calling it a pilot so, I mean, this is That's a question, right. right? You can you can put out a call or you can invite a pool to select from. Um, so that is, I mean, I, my th thinking was that maybe we would put out a, a, a call this time and allow, allow it to be more open and see what we get. Um, and then we, went, we might end up with a broader base of people to pick from. I mean, sometimes in those situations, you actually don't get you get better results by actually going to people whose work you think will work well and and inviting them. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, that's why we got such good um, entries because they were very, very good entries. What was that because of why? Because we invited, so it's like 
that like what kind of caliber of art we wanted to put in there went after that rather than just like you know throwing it to the wind and seeing hmm. what land so we were specific about the specifics of the proposals we invited three artists to make, I think it was three, three or four artists to make proposals as opposed to putting out a public call for- Oh, I see, okay. For entries, yeah. I, I had forgotten that, thanks, Bill. Right. I mean, if, if people want to brainstorm a little bit between now and our next meeting, and if they have ideas for people who, you know, we want to invite as opposed to doing a public call, we could certainly consider that as our, as our uh, format for this again as well. Um, you do get, I mean, you do get a much stronger pool that way. And I think that if, if it's an open call, a lot of times people who are strong artists don't want to apply, right? Because they just fit, but if you're inviting them and it's going to be a smaller number of people and, you know, they know that they'll have a good chance of getting picked, then they're more likely to apply. And put effort into the application. That's right. That's right. So why don't why don't we mull this over in the next between now and our next meeting? And if, if people have um, specific artists they think would work well in that space that they would want to invite, um, I guess the question we might want to ask ourselves is: Are we keeping it focused on sort of area artists, or you know could we go broader? The problem is that the honorarium we'll be able to yeah. pay is so meager that I don't think any. Uh, yeah <laughs> big name artist worth their salt is going to want to do this for a few hundred bucks so you wouldn't be able to cover transportation and lodging and all right. of that yeah how much, would, how much would it take to get their interest going well i think at a minimum a few thousand dollars plus you know place to stay and you know i, I like a thousand dollars each what do you mean each for each artist do we need to the stipend needs to be a few thousand dollars. Well, there's only going to be one artist. Okay, so it needs to be a few thousand dollars for one artist. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Okay. I, I like featuring area artists if we can. I, I think there's, you know, I like that that um, Ben was a Amherst resident. Um, so I don't think it needs to disqualify some people, but I think we should just give consideration to area artists. It does make things a lot easier in a lot of different ways. Um, and it showcases the culture, mm -hmm. the cultural, you know, producers in, you know, here. So, but I think we can take area being broadly. I mean, I think oh, yeah. area can be Western Massachusetts. I mean, even um, somebody wants to think about coming up from Boston or, or Connecticut or, or Vermont, you know, I mean, I think that would be fine. All right, so let's let's ponder that for our next meeting and then we'll try to make some progress on that. Um, hopefully the funds will be in our account by then. So we'll, we'll see that money. Um, Bill, I'm sorry, can you just remind me it was 2,500? 2,500. Tw so okay. that's better than we had last time. Last time we only had 2,000. Okay. So we did, 2000 for the installation and 500 was for the event. Um, so now we can either do the 2500 for the installation and hopefully fundraise for the other 500 for the event or, you know, 500 for the event and, to, you know, so, but it's nice to get a little more money anyway. Mm -hmm. So if we got 25,000, how much of that goes to the other than to the artist? Well, it would be wonderful if we got 25,000. Unfortunately, we only got 2,500. <laughs> yeah, it would, wouldn't it? We wouldn't be ignored if we had a budget of 25,000. <laughs> no, we could, we could actually, yeah. Um, 2,500, uh, how much? Well, so what we did was we, uh, I don't remember the exact structure, but I think it was, you know, the artists spent what they needed on the project and got to keep the rest. Well, but you know, you said it was only a few hundred dollars for the artist, and I got confused because 2,500 is not a few hundred. Well, when we looked at what they what they spec, so Ben ended up spending. So we had two thousand last time, and his budget was like well, it was was it like twelve hundred dollars or right. something, or, or fifteen hundred dollars. So he only ended up walking away with a few hundred dollars for himself after that materials, and, and certainly that's not even counting his time. So you know, right. um, yeah. Anything else about that? All right, Town Hall Gallery. Shona, anything on Town Hall Gallery? 
Uh, yes, I have someone that is interested in displaying, um, and I need to get them the contract, and it's not in our Google Drive. So does anybody have access to that that document that could, okay. and I would like to be able to have it in the Google Drive for the future. So that's the contract? Yeah, the contract um, between like, you know, the town and the artist that says like, you know, if you make so many sales, we get a percentage and, you know, the fee that you pay to get in and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I just opened the folder on my computer called Town Hall Gallery, and I do not see it in there. Um, Amy Crawley would be somebody to reach out to potentially as well if nobody else has it. I'll, I can look more closely in my uh, Public Art Commission folder, too. I don't have it. But you need that a ASAP, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not seeing it here, but it might, I might have it um, on my work computer. Yeah. I don't have it on my home computer. I mean, I would shoot an email to Amy. Surely she has a copy of it. In fact, um, it would be, yeah, we should really have that obviously accessible to all. I know I've seen it. So that's why I'm thinking I might have a copy of it somewhere. But do you want to, do you, are you okay with emailing Amy, Shona? I am. I feel like I've been pestering her a lot though lately, like over this last, I don't know, a couple months or whatever. So I feel bad that like if, if we could find it without pestering Amy, that would be super awesome. Okay. All right. Well, everybody look through your folders and see if you can find it. If not, you know, and then email Shona. If not, then um, I think I can pester Amy if you don't want to. Okay. I haven't, I haven't reached out to her much lately, so. Um, so who's this person who wants to exhibit? Um, let me, I have to look in my, I have to do all this on my phone because my computer is out of. No, I don't have it. It's. Isabella Del Olio. Oh yes, I know. I know who she is. She um, she's the one who did that slideshow behind uh, um, like the bike shop in that little lot there. Oh, yeah, I think that's where she did it. She, yeah, she did I, the show. Yeah. Yeah, she'll be she'll be great. That would be a great person to have um, exhibit there. So. Uh, anything else with town hall gallery? Um. Uh, we still have uh, Chris Bordenka up in there, and um, there's been a little bit of sales. I think we, so far we made like $30 that I've okay. heard. Excellent. How much has he made? Um, I don't know, whatever percentage we get off of that. Or I think, you know, but I'm not even sure what the percentage is, actually, because uh, is it 30 Oh, don't worry about it. It's in the that document. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it for our agenda. Plans for moving forward. Um, I don't think anything beyond what we've talked about already, unless anybody has anything. Um, there's other business. I don't think we have a lot of extra other business. Is there anything that anybody else wanted to chat about relative to public garden town? Oh, Grinspoon, um, update on that is um, we have the agreement, the previous agreement with them. Paul and I looked at it and updated it. Um, uh, the only issue is that they can't take the old, um, so Ellen, to, to fill you in, the Grinspoon sculpture that's there now broke. So it lost one of its limbs, essentially. They took it away. Um, they suggested a bunch of pieces we could put in its place. We weren't happy with any of them. We said, oh, just let's leave that one there, even though it's broken. But they really came back to us after a month or two and said it has to come down. Um, so they sent us a few more suggestions and we agreed on one at our last meeting. Um, and we agreed to have it for one year period only. And that would be it because otherwise we felt like there would really have to be significant public process, um, you know, and we can't just 
uh, plant a work of art permanently in the, in the part. His works aren't meant to be there permanently anyway, but um, you know, we just felt like one more, one more year would be appropriate. And then that was sort of it for him, unless we decide to more permanently put a piece there, in which case we'd really like to have a, you know, do a bigger public process. So the, the only issue is that they can't take, they can't take the one out and put the new one in until the ground thaws. So it'll be in the spring and then it'll be a year from whenever they do the new piece in the spring um Great. but the date is sort of to be determined but everything else is sort of in place at this point and do you have a picture of the new piece going in yeah i, I can uh i can email it to you um okay. we all would look at it and decided on it at our last meeting um, okay thanks uh so should we just plan our next meeting sure okay Helen, do I have to include the dog barking in the minutes? Only if you know what he's saying. It's crazy. He does, she does this all day. It makes me <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think the dog sounds very intelligent. <laughs> she's all of nine pounds, but she is so loud. Oh, she sounds like. So a month from now ish would be uh, the 28th. Uh, Monday the 28th at four, um, unless we wanted to meet earlier. I mean, I don't feel strongly like we need to meet earlier, um, unless you all do. I'm good. Uh, I have a doctor appointment that day. That would interfere with four o'clock? It's actually at four o'clock. <laughs> Could we do earlier in the day? Hang on. We could do noon like we used to. That's fine with me. Yeah, I cannot. Um, the week, what is it? I've got a week off in February. Yeah, there's winter. There's winter break, but you know we might go away. You know, you to sort of. Uh, yeah. The week, the week before, you mean. Yeah, what, what is that? Like the 21st through the 25th, I have off. So I could meet on the 21st or any time during that week, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm away that week. What about the first, which would be a Tuesday instead of Monday at four? Oh, no, I can't do that. Sorry, I have... Uh... I have to take my kids to after school. <laughs> I could do it yeah. earlier in the day on the I first. Day and Wednesday. What's that? I work till five on Tuesday and Wednesdays. So. Oh. Um, well, we could have it the seventh. How about we push it further? Monday the seventh at four. I have a meet. I have a thing on that day. Too. <laughs> oh well, could we meet without you on the 28th? Yeah. You can meet without me. I'll I could send in like any like special info. I mean, it's just for a shot. So huh. I might, you know, it's at four and I, I have to get a shot. So I could probably just like miss the first half hour or something. Okay. These meetings have been going very quickly. I like to keep them cooking when it's on Zoom. So we, we haven't really gone over an hour in, in quite a while. In fact, we're a little bit under an hour now. Um, but we'll, we'll drag our feet for you if you want. <laughs> so we just agreed on the 28th at four. Is that right? Uh, is that that work for everybody else? Dara, is that me. Okay. For yeah, you? it's okay. Okay. It's good for me. All right. I will let Angela know. Let me just get it my calendar before I hang up with you all. Um, anything else? Not me. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, good to see you again, Alan. So glad thank to have you, you back on board. <laughs> good to be yeah. back. And uh, good to see everybody else. And, uh, you know, it'd be great to do this in person at some point. I don't know. I know, right? Whether or not we're allow allowed to meet in person yet. 
I can find out, does that do, is there any interest in meeting in person? You know, and we'd have to do it in town hall with masks on. Jim saying no, Dara saying no, no. Keep, keep it on Zoom. I'm uh, saying that the projection is good, but now it's too early. All right. All right, we'll give it a couple, give it another month and we'll check in on that again. <laughs> all right, thank you everybody. Okay, thank, right. you. thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.